I was in a dark basement 13 years ago. Alcohol on my breath, just like the stale air in Iraq. It feels normal. I'd been home for a few months. I go down to my knees, hands shaking, and tears running down my face. I pick up a loaded 9mm handgun and place it under my chin. My eyes close, gently squeezing the trigger as my mind races through my life's history that led up to this very moment with post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms of flashbacks, fear, anxiety, and on the verge of suicide. At just two years old, sick, so sick, <clears throat> laying on top of a block of ice in a refugee camp as my family fled the Khmer Rouge. After two and a half years of living at the same refugee camp that I was named after, my family was lucky to be sponsored by an American couple as we sought asylum in the U.S. The relief and enjoyment of freedom in America changed the pain when my father died when I was in the fourth grade, holding a photo and crying every night for my dad. The following summer, I worked at a fish factory, waking at four in the morning to go to work with my mother and not return home until 8 p.m. That summer, I made more than enough money that I could ever imagine at the time, and all I kept was $300 because I needed money for school clothes and my family needed food. In middle and high school, I ran track to avoid joining a local gang. Come to find out, I was fast and I could jump. Although I was athletically talented, I dreamed of going to college to pursue a business degree. But being poor and without a mentor, I needed a leg up. And one day, I walked into an army recruiter's office. I recall the recruiter saying, you're joining the National Guard, son and you will never be deployed. What a crock of shit. <laughs> he said, you can do anything and you can join anything and your scores were good on the aptitude test. Except, you can't choose military intelligence because it requires you to be a citizen of the United States. Hearing that was hurtful. I thought I was an American. I enlisted anyway in 2001 by the end of my senior year of high school. Still a resident alien. In a little over 24 months, I found myself packed up and headed for the Iraq war, first of two deployments. An hour after landing, I already witnessed one Iraqi man fighting for his life and another Dead. That was just the beginning of hell. It is now 2004. I've been in country, and I already lost two friends to a suicide bomber in our dining facility in Ford Operating Base Marez. That same year, for the first time, I shot a man, and in that very moment, I lost my innocence. That same year, I watched a friend die a slow death in Missoula, Iraq, from an improvised explosive device. I witnessed him taking his final breaths, gurgling for air, and I could not do a damn thing. And on that day, my lieutenant credited me for returning and saving 12 lives as we both laid helpless on gurneys. That was traumatic. A few months later, I was awarded the Purple Heart. A bitter, sweet moment. I was proud because the enemy did not kill me but I still felt broken inside. The highlights of my deployment starts to flood in. 
remembering my three days of swimming, eating good, fatty foods, and just enjoying my time. I was lucky for that last flood of memory. In a dark basement, 13 years ago, I did not pull the trigger. I want to change so veterans in my shoes can get the help that they deserve and not be in the pain that I was in. Nationally, 13 million Americans have PTSD at any given time. One in 10 women will get PTSD sometime in their lives. Today, more than 20 veterans a day die by suicide higher than the rate of civilians. When is the right time to speak about the elephant in the room? When is the right time to speak to your family and friends about their struggles? Before it's too late and before the trigger is pulled. This war left me damaged physically, mentally, and emotionally drained. I could no longer handle my anxiety, my depression, and that led me to eventually retiring as an Army Staff Sergeant. It has taken years of therapy, years of ups and downs, a supportive partner to working my way up to now, and that is owning it. Owning the fact that I was a complete shit show from my first deployment and then the next. Owning it, that I was not the nicest guy around, owning it, that my world of the outside was based on my lived experiences of the war, is in fact real, but is not real. I know those of us with trauma gets it, because I see you, I hear you, I feel you. My life has been different. And I just want to say, for those of us who have seen the depths of hell, some of us do not like tight quarters, having our backs to the door, being at a venue for the first time, having large crowds, or even entering our own homes in the evening without first securing the outside perimeter, and then clearing room to room until deeming it safe. Lastly, but not limited to this, we fucking hate balloons. <laughs> I hate balloons because the sound of it exploding reminds me of the war. My poor kids have birthdays without balloons. I am a survivor, and I am proud of that. It is okay to ask for help. I am not broken. I learned to acknowledge that my life was better. When I learned to acknowledge that I was skipping work, that I was angry and did not take my medication, I assessed my life and made a plan. I looked at my home, my family, and my friends. And then I acted. I kept my appointments with my doctors. I kept my plans with my family and friends that were positive. I did the work. I and the countless number of veterans and survivors of other traumas, such as physical, psychological, and sexual abuse, need this kind of ownership from all of you. We need leaders to own it. We need them to not say, it's fine, that's normal, you're weak. We need military leaders and the president to say, that's traumatic, and now you need our support. We need our state and federal policies to make it easy for this kind of support. 
and own their role in being a support to people with PTSD, not make it harder. We need our family and friends. We need you to be a chain of support. If you are suffering from PTSD and having thoughts of suicide, I have love for you because I believe in you. I am a father, I am a husband, and I am someone with symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. But most importantly, we are not broken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.